Hey everyone, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. In this video, I wanna walk you through creating a dark library, a collection of dark frames that you can use and reuse for months on end. And the best part is, you can collect them anytime, maybe a night like tonight, when it's cloudy, and I won't be getting any imaging done anyway. So come on, let's check it out. So for me, creating a dark library is uh, one of the best time-saving things that I've found in this hobby of astrophotography. Uh, time is of the essence, and I certainly don't want to be taking time from a clear night in order to collect dark frames. It's something I did when I was first beginning the hobby using a DSLR camera. I would spend uh, an hour or more after my imaging session collecting those dark frames and hoping that the temperature was close enough on the sensor uh, for them to be uh, properly calibrating the lights. Uh, since I've moved now to a cooled astrophotography camera, though, uh, it's a different story because I can set the temperature that I want my uh, chip to be, and then I can collect these dark frames anytime. It doesn't have to be immediately before or after and closely matching the temperature of the lights because those light temperatures can be matched at any point. So cooled astrophotography cameras, definitely a huge benefit here, creating this dark library and ultimately saving you a lot of time. So beyond the basic effort of setting up the dark library and having to uh, spend the time to collect these frames, which honestly can mostly be done while you're doing something else entirely, maybe even sleeping, there are some serious advantages to collecting a dark library. It's a great way to take advantage of a cloudy night or maybe a clear and windy night where you're not going to be imaging anyway. Of course, it can also be done during the day. You don't necessarily have to be doing this at night, so you can be relaxing on the couch and collecting dark frames for your dark library at the same time. It's also going to save you time in your stacking uh, because you're eventually going to have some master dark frames that are sitting there and ready to use. So you're not always waiting for your uh, program of choice to run through those dark frames and create the, the master frame each and every time. So overall, a huge time saver. Now there's some differing opinions on how long dark frames are generally good for. I've heard anywhere from six months to about a year. I, I generally go a little bit on the, the shorter end of that just to be sure that these dark frames are accurately calibrating. As sensors change and you get different hot pixels on the sensor, you are going to be wanting to be uh, updating these on a regular schedule and uh, keeping track of which uh, library is your most recent one. I last did this in August, and now it's February, so it's about time for me to uh, refresh it and get a new dark library started. So the considerations you want to make for these dark frames are basically planning ahead and knowing what exposure lengths and other settings you have for your lights in general. So you're going to want to match the temperature which I usually run at negative 15 degrees Celsius on my ASI 1600mm Pro. Uh, there's a few hot, humid summer nights that I can't quite actually get to negative 15, so I usually have a set of negative 10 as well, although occasionally I'll just take those dark frames as needed as those uh, hot nights occur. You also want to match your exposure length. Now, depending on your setup and what you might do, you may have a, a pretty big spread of these. I generally go for some 10-second darks, some 30-second, 60 second and 120 second. With Rasa, I'm not going much beyond 120 seconds on a regular basis, so that's pretty much what I do. But for you, you may have 600 seconds or 1200 seconds, depending on your setup and how long those exposures go. So make sure you are getting a good spread of those and generally guessing about what those exposure times are going to be. Now, if you're a little bit more discerning on those exposure times, you might find yourself having to spend a lot more time capturing the accurate darks or on the off chance that you happen to be changing the exposure time for a given imaging session, you can always just take another set of darks and use those as the calibration frames just for those particular lights. For a lot of cameras out there, there's pretty much just one gain that's recommended, and that's going to be the best. I do like to play around a little bit with the ASI 1600, so I generally take some gain zero uh, frames. Those are going to be mainly when I'm shooting the RGB, uh, because that light just gets collected so quickly. Uh, sometimes I'll go for gain 70. That's when I'm trying to get a lot of dynamic range in the image. But then 139 is unity gain on the ASI 1600, and so you're going to be definitely capturing quite a few darks there as well. So you're eventually going to be capturing a bunch of different darks at different gain settings, potentially different temperature settings, and also different exposure lengths. So as far as getting set up and getting ready to go with your dark library, you will want to remove the camera most likely from your setup. Uh, my Rasa doesn't allow me to have uh, any uh, chance of having no light leak uh, when I'm putting uh, maybe a, a dark blanket or something over the dew shield. And so I generally just remove the camera 
And then I also put the cap on. I put one of the spacer rings on and then the camera cap over that. It's probably unnecessary, but I usually kind of tuck it into the camera case that came with it. Now you do want to make sure that the vents on the side, any intake and outtake uh, vents, the fan on the end, all of that is clear and free and that air is able to move freely so that the camera can effectively cool itself. If you happen to be doing this maybe on a warm afternoon and you find it's a little bit tough to get that uh, camera as cool as it needs to be, certainly much tougher than it is in the cool of the evening, you could set up a fan that's blowing on it. Now you do want to make sure it's a constant stream of air. You don't want one that's oscillating back and forth because then your camera's going to have to work extra hard in order to keep that temperature constant. Some people even go so far as to put their camera in the fridge. So if you've got cables that are long enough and they're not going to get too crimped in the door, absolutely go for it. All right, so now we're going to go to the ASI Air app and see how we're going to set up this run for our dark library. All right, so one of the things that you want to make sure that you do is that you're using the correct temperature of your sensor and also the correct gain. And one of the things that, as far as I know, still isn't possible to do is to change the gain and temperature settings within maybe a plan mode or an auto run mode. Uh, that's something that maybe a, a future update to the ASI Air Plus that we'll see is uh, the ability to do that, but currently that isn't possible. All right, so here in auto run, I'm gonna open up the shooting schedule here and I've got uh, my target listed here as dark 139, but you can choose your own. We're gonna select this as a dark frame so that gets added into the fits header. We're gonna do 120 second exposures and we'll do 60 of them. Now, you can find plenty of input online for just how many of these dark frames you should be doing. I found 60 works just fine. Uh, some people might say I could get away with 30 or 10 or probably not none, I guess depending on the camera, you might be able to. Or maybe I should be doing twice this or triple this. Uh, but 60 I found works pretty well. So that's gonna take two hours to do just that set of dark. Now we're gonna do a set of 60 seconds. That's another hour. We'll add in 30 seconds, some 10 seconds, and I'm also going to be doing some 5 seconds. Now these are actually my dark flats or flat darks. That's the same exposure time as my flats. And uh, so those are going to be useful for calibrating my flat frames, but also uh, those can be used perhaps if I'm doing some really short exposures, maybe for some RGB stars or something like that. I'll have some uh, 5 second lights, but not generally. So this is 3 hours 45 minutes. You can see how this starts to add up. This is only at gain 139, negative 15 degrees Celsius. If I'm going to be going for gain 70 and gain 0, and potentially also adding in a set of these at negative 10 degrees Celsius, this can start to certainly add up. But you don't have to take these all at once. Uh, you can certainly do it over the course of several nights, several weeks even. It's not a huge deal that these are all taken at exactly the same time. But just so you're generally aware of when they were taken and when it's time to shoot another dark library. So I want to show you here my current dark library and kind of how I organize this. I actually got two versions in here, one from January of last year and one from August of last year. So I'm going to be uh, replacing these uh, with this current iteration. So opening this up, I've got darks and flat darks. The flat darks I won't get into too much, but it's essentially a set of five second dark frames, as I mentioned before, that I'm going to be calibrating my flats with. But here in the darks, we begin with the temperature selection. So negative 10 and negative 15. We'll go to negative 15. I've got a set of gains in here from 0, 70, and 139. And then within each one of those, so within gain 70 and within gain 0, I've got a set of different exposure lengths for these, uh, for these dark frames. Uh, let's go with uh, 139 and 120 seconds. So in here, where I'm going to dump my initial set of darks is right in here in just a raw files folder that I put in here. And then I'm going to be getting a calibrated, a master dark uh, from these. That is going to pop out uh, when I'm doing any sort of stacking. I use PixInsight, uh, so if I'm doing a weighted batch preprocessing or something in that master folder, you're going to find that you've got a dark frame there. So I generally either copy or just cut it out of there and put it into my dark library. So I've got that master just ready to go. That way, each time I'm stacking after that, and I've taken lights that are gain 139, and they're 120 seconds long at negative 15 degrees Celsius, I don't have to wait for the program to run through all those darks and create a new master dark frame. I've already got a master dark here that works. So I guess technically I probably could go back and delete all those raw files, and eventually I'm going to archive and probably eventually get rid of a lot of these darks. 
Uh, but it is good, a good idea to keep those master dark frames. If you're ever wanting to go back and uh, potentially reprocess some old data, you're going to definitely want to have those matching darks uh, with your lights that you had from that old data. So that's really all there is to it. It's not a hugely complicated process. It's just something you have to plan a little bit ahead and uh, just make the time in order to, uh, to get it done. So that's what we've got for you this time. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, definitely do give it a like. That's going to help others find it as well. And otherwise, clear skies. We'll see you next time.